Your Super Bowl ring has done its job. It has gotten my attention. Is it is it impolite, uh, improper if I ask if I may hold it? Oh, you want to hold it? All right. I got my security. I got my security <laughs> over here. Uh, I'm you know no where thief. To find I've it. got yeah, no yeah, speed yeah, whatsoever, yeah, pal. Got my security over here just in case. <laughs> I, I, I got to get my <laughs> glasses <laughs> on here. My jewel, jeweler's it information. We'll, we'll that, continue to that, check. Okay. That thing is uh, that thing is blinding as Paul surveys it. I, I'm curious. You know, Doug Peterson was your coach when you got that ring. Yeah. Um, we've talked about it a lot on this show. We were surprised that it took him as long as it did to get another head coaching job. Now he's the head man in Jacksonville. Was that surprising to you? When you saw it take a little while? I don't think so. I think Doug probably took some time away from the game. Uh, you know, this game, you sacrifice so much, put so much into it, and I'm, I'm sure he just needed some time away. And now he felt as though he was in a good place to be able to fully commit to a team, uh, to getting back, uh, you know, with the hopes of getting them to uh, what we're all holding over there, you know, a Super Bowl. And he's fully capable of doing that, I think, it won't be easy, of course, but he has the formula. He knows what it takes. Uh, he's able to work with young quarterbacks as he was able to work with Carson and, and get him to play at the level that he did for us for for years. And I think he'll have uh, success uh, there in Jacksonville. Well, and what you hear about him is complete opposite of Urban Meyer uh, from a leadership standpoint where Urban Meyer is – the old school dictator. Yeah, he's very much a player friendly coach. Was that your experience? Very much so. Uh, we had leadership co- councils. Uh, he always checked in with us. Uh, you know, the leaders on the team, just to make sure. Look, let me hear what's going on in the locker room. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think is best? And when you have somebody that truly shows that he cares about his players in the way that he does, it makes players just want to play for him that much more. And that's what you saw. Uh, Doug was very consistent throughout his tenure w- with the Eagles, and it led us to uh, a lot of winning seasons there. And, of course, more importantly, winning the Super Bowl. Uh, I was sad to see him go. Uh, send him a heartfelt message when he did leave, man, because I, I, Dougie P, that's what I called him <laughs> from day one. And I came to Philly with him, uh, and so it was sad to see him go. But uh, now he's getting another opportunity to leave his mark in this league. How would you describe Nick Sirianni's style as a coach? Uh, very passionate uh, individual, very passionate coach, uh, somebody who loves teaching the game of football. Uh, he, there's not a moment that doesn't go by where he isn't teaching about the game, and I think that's very important whether you're a veteran like myself at year 10 or you're somebody like Devontae Smith who's just stepping into the league as a rookie. Uh, we all benefit uh, from that, and so I, I think Nick is going to do an amazing job throughout his you know, however long he coaches with uh, Philly, man. And I, I was glad to have him as my coach this year. We were able to turn things around. And one thing about him, he's, he's consistent in his approach and everything. So um, we were able to, to make that run because of it. What did, what did Jim Schwartz mean to that defense while, while he was there? We know him relatively well from, from Tennessee. Yeah, man, Jim, uh, another guy who I, was, I came in with in 16. And, and you know, I have a very good relationship with Jim. Uh, he meant a lot to that defense and, and, and us, uh, us players and was a huge reason why we had a lot of success. Uh, you know, he's, he's a very smart coach, uh, knows a lot, seen a lot, uh, and holds all of us accountable. I think about the one moment uh, we had his last season there. We played the Giants. We didn't necessarily play our best uh, ball. And he came in, man, and, and let us all hear it. Uh, and when I mean everybody, I mean everybody. He singled every one of us out in defensive meeting. Called myself out, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that. We need you to be doing this. And it, it paid dividend, man. And, and guys have a lot of respect for Jim. And so, uh, you know, of course, we didn't have a winning season that year. But uh, defensively, you know, we, we, had a, we had a good season and uh, wishing him the best. I know he's out in Tennessee uh, and so, you know, he might in- enter back into coaching one day himself. I noticed Devontae Smith walking around, uh, Heisman Trophy winner, rookie this past year on your team. Yeah. It's amazing when I see him. It's, I watch him in Alabama, and I see him up close. He is so skinny. Yeah. Uh, look, I know he could kick my ass. Uh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. But And I'm a lot bigger than he is. But it, it is remarkable when you see him, his skill set. But he is a light guy. What's it like going up against him in practice? He's fast. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think for Devontae, 
he he relies on his speed, right? You're not going to get that big hit on him because he is so he is so fast. But he's very fearless. Uh, I joke around with him all the time uh, and talking about man, it, if I saw you coming across the middle, man, I you know I, I would hit you. I take it. He's like, man, it's just part of the game. It's just part of the game. And he earned my respect. Uh, I think it was maybe a preseason game. And he got the ball. And then there's all this narrative about, you know, is he is he um, is he strong enough to go across the middle? Is he going to be durable enough to withstand the hits in this league? His body frame, and he wanted to go in there and take on the contact. Uh, and that's what I saw from him every single week. He's a he's a competitor, man. He always wants the ball when it matters the most. He's always looking to get better, um, and he's fearless, uh, regardless of size. Uh, he's a guy like myself that just plays with a lot of heart, and you have to love that about about the young man, and all he does is work, um, and he's going to continue to get better in this league. Ronnie McLeod has been our guest. Paul, what did you think of the ring? Uh, I mean, it's uh, – I, I, I can't I – can't, <laughs> I can't, too I can't, much? I can't There's speak. no words, apparently. I mean, they're all, they're all too much, but that's <laughs> yeah, the point, a lot. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the point. yeah. You want people to see from all the way across across, you across know the room. Saying? Yeah, yeah. So and right you, now, somebody over in that opposite corner is blinded. So yeah. when you when you win the title, do you get every? Like, do you get to pick which ring you want? You know, which figure you want size? Because you're wearing it on your index finger. Yeah, you do uh, size whatever uh, finger uh, of your choice. You know, Why the index finger? Yeah. I felt like I thought I was going to get three more, <laughs> okay, and and like just go all the way across with them and just that's, you know put them up. That's good foresight. Unfortunately, I only know a uh, few people who can do that. Uh, I saw LG earlier. He has, I think, about four. He didn't wear all of them today, but uh, I've seen him do it, and it's it's impressive. I wonder if Tom got him sized that way. Oh, he's he, yeah. he's he's, yeah. The, he's got a ridiculous. photo like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. He's got to. You might as well, yeah. That probably should go up next week. Just, <laughs> just remind people of his of his work. It's it's incredible. I actually, uh, I was pretty brash. I picked you guys to go down to Tampa and, and pull off an upset in the playoffs, and cost a lot of people a lot of money. <laughs> that, that did not happen. That did not happen. I it did sorry. not end well for me. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, congrats. You, over you may have been a part of Tom Brady's last win as an NFL player. Yeah. Also, you yeah, were in that game. You, that's, can, that's, you can and, always say you were in the game. That yeah, was his and, last game or last win. Put a touchdown up on me specifically so yeah kudos to tom <laughs> see your favorite quarterback to go against uh i think him and aaron Rodgers are probably uh, my two favorite i've seen them a long time in this league and uh it impresses me how they only continue to get better the accuracy that aaron Rodgers had i don't think anybody uh not even you know tom really uh is on his level to be able to throw in the pocket on the run however you want to spin it he gets it done. Uh, Tom Brady is just flat out a winner. Uh, he just finds a way to rally the troops, um, and he's a man who doesn't make uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and will capitalize when you uh, make make some. So, uh, man, it, they're they're hard to beat. They're they're hard to beat, and that's why they've been able to have as much success as they they have, and both are. Uh, future Hall of Famers, and uh, in some people's eyes, you know, both are labeled as one of the goats. You uh, you just finished your ten, right? Yeah. You are you a free agent? This up? You yeah. Kind of talking in the past tense with the Eagles, so that's why I'm bringing that up. Oh, was I talking in the past? Well, you tense? said hey, it's been it's been great playing for Sirianni, and I took that as maybe he's a free agent. Yeah. Okay. I am a free agent. So you, you know how this business goes. You you don't know. Uh, as much as I would love to come back to Philadelphia. Uh, it's meant a lot to uh, my wife and I just playing on that team and, and really changed, you know, my life, uh, to be honest. Things I've been able to do since I've arrived there in 2016, I couldn't imagine. And, of course, winning one of these, uh, this is why we play the game. This is the reason why I chose to go to Philly, to be honest, because I felt like they were a competitive organization uh, and that they would give me the best opportunity to uh, accomplish one of my goals. And so uh, I'm forever grateful, and I'm hoping that, you know, they, they do give me an opportunity to come back and prove that I can play this game uh, one more year and, and lead, lead my guys and uh, looking forward to just getting back into the playoffs. But we'll see. Future's unknown. Uh, all I can do is control what I can control, and that's uh, making sure that I uh, get myself prepared this offseason to come back a better version of myself than I was last year. Good luck to you. 
appreciate, appreciate it, man. it, man. Good to see you. Thank you. Ronnie McLeod has been our guest. More coming from Radio Row at Super Bowl 56 on Outkick 360.